All right, welcome to the Retro Sports Gamer channel. We got a special video for you tonight. I'm here with Kevin C. What's up, Kevin? How's it going? Good to be here. Thank you for having me. Yeah, no problem. We're going to open a box. This is called a box break of 92-93 FLIR Ultra. And the reason me and Kevin are open this, it's the NBA Jam Session subset series within the packs. So this bad boy ran for about, I uh, got it for 29 bucks off eBay with the shipping. So not bad back in the day. It would have been uh, way more than that. But basically what, what I'm going to do today is open this box. Um, and then I told Kevin that I will give him the doubles. So I'll send those to Kevin. So Kevin's got something invested in this too. Hey, I'm looking so forward. To let's that. get. <laughs> so Kevin, did, did you collect cards back in the day? Um, a little bit. I was more of a, I, like if, if there are any cards, like other, mostly baseball cards. Um, I never got like huge into collecting, probably just like the late eighties, kind of like the early nineties. I, I don't know it's, if they coincide with each other, but like once the, the baseball strike happened in 94, I just kind of stopped collecting cards altogether. But, oh yeah. That, that kind of hurt a lot of people. The White Sox were so good at the time. They probably could have won a world series that year, but right. Uh, right. Didn't happen. All right, so here's the fresh box. Fleer Ultras right here, 92, 93. Let's see what we get. First pack. So we got 36 packs. So let me just read uh, real quick what we could get as far as the insert cards. It usually says it on uh, the pack. So in this particular set, uh, there's an all-rookie subset, and those are one out of 13 packs. Um, is that all there is in this one? Uh, well, we'll see. Let's just open the packs. Then. <laughs> That's the only thing I see on the back of this one. All right. Oh wow, these these are crispy. I haven't opened one of these in quite some time. Let's see if the cards are still in good condition. All right, so we got a little J.R. Reed action. Nice, so nice. A little bit stuck together. Brian Howard. Maurice Cheeks. <laughs> Coach of the NBA. Marlon Maxey, rookie card. You, you know who that is, Kevin? I, I don't. I'm not, not familiar with him. Me neither. <laughs> I don't know. Here's a good one. Brent Price, underrated NBA player. Oh, there you go. Watch him. Yes. So... Rick. Come off the of bench. Man, there's a lot of rookies in these cards. Robin, Robert Werdan. There he is. Look at the All right. Rookies. Tree Rollins. The old. Tree Rollins right here. I like the, the backs of these cards. I always liked the like hardwood floor and then the stats. I thought that was pretty cool. Oh, yeah. We got Kiki Vanderway. Here we go. So here's two NBA Jam Session cards right off the back. All right. We got Derek Coleman and uh, Horace Grant. Hell yes. Two so superstars. They have, they have dunk rank on them. So, like, Coleman's a dunk rank 10 and Horace Grant's a uh, dunk rank 19. I don't know if that has to do with their actual – like ranking and dunking, or if it's just like the position they play. I'm not really sure, but there's 20 of these cards that we'll be looking for in this subset. So as I move through the rest of these packs, I'll probably go through them quickly, see if there's an insert or any good cards. And then I'm looking for the NBA Jam Session cards. And then I'll also point out the key uh, doubles that I get for Kevin. Well, I can tell you maybe like the, the, the dunk rating, like you said, it's like there's 20 of them. So maybe it's like uh, that, like Horace Grant is like number 19 out of 20. Like that's like they just kind of number them numerically by player or something. Yeah, I think so because Jordan's not in the top five. So that can't be right, I don't think. All right, yeah. here's another pack. Oh, I got to show this one off. Kurt Rambis. <laughs> oh, my boy, yes. The pasty, pasty white guy with the big glasses and the short shorts, my guy. <laughs> All right, here's a good one. Another NBA Jam Session card, Scotty Pippen. 
That's a Chicago legend right there. All right, oh, see if you got anything else good in here. Another jam session card. The Kembe Matumbo. Get out of Matumbo's house. He's in uh, the original NBA Jam and TE. And uh, this is a surprising NBA Jam session card. Tim Perry on uh, the 76ers. I'm not too familiar with it, to be honest. And we got some people chatting. Rambus, you can only hope to uh, contain him. <laughs> All right. Let's move on to the next one. You see anything you like so far, Kevin? Oh, that, that Coleman one's really nice. I'm a big fan of Derek Coleman, what could have been. So he could have been a superstar, just things that did more harm or lazy or something. I don't know. But. All right, I'm opening this one. I'm looking for anything good. Here we go, another jam session card. Oh, two of them. This is a good one. The Admiral David Robinson. There you go. Beautiful. Look at that big boy. Dunk. I love him. He's got a dunk rank one. So, I mean, he could slam the ball down, but, I mean, as far as style points, I don't think he's number one. So it can't be that. And then the dunk rank 20 NBA Jam Session card, Orlando Woolridge. Okay. <laughs> so, I'm not, not even <laughs> – I got, I got nothing on that one, so it's a – I'm not, not familiar yeah, with you know, it. Honestly, back in the day, the the year I started collecting cards was 93, 94. So this one was like right before the year I started collecting and really paying attention to the NBA. Gotcha. gotcha. Still, so this is almost like adding uh, adding a little bit more nostalgia factor to it, at least. Uh, you're going <laughs> to recognize almost every player in the pack. It's just, uh, you know, it's a little, little different. So. Right. Exactly. All right. Here's the first insert card. It's uh, Walt Williams, all rookie. He didn't have nice. a bad career. Nice. Burn the rest of the packs. The chat saying. All right. Let's see if we got anything good. Malik Seeley rookie card. The problem is like these cards are so been in here so long they're like stuck together. <laughs> Harold Miner, you know Harold Miner from NBA Jam. Oh, yeah, baby, baby Jordan. Love him. Baby Jordan, there okay. he is. Yeah. Rookie card. Hopefully I get a double of that so I can send it to you. Okay. Yeah, find me a double out of that, all right? I'm sure there will be. <laughs> I'm sure there will be. And it looks like we're, we're averaging about two NBA Jam session cards a pack, which is pretty cool. And we got two guys on the Cleveland Cavaliers, John Williams, Dunk Rake, 18, and uh, Brad Doherty, Dunk Rake 9. There you go. NASCAR superstar. So. <laughs> All right. Let's see what – oh, we got a checklist, first checklist. You always need that. There you go. Get, get a pen out. Get a pen out. You got to mark that down. So Here we go. <laughs> Big card right here. Alonzo Mourning rookie card. Nice, nice. Because he was, yeah, he was rookie of the year that year, right? Ninety two, ninety three, or no, Shaq. I'm sorry, yeah, yeah. Shaq, yeah, Shaq's the other. Yeah. Rookie. All right, here we go. Here's your first big double card. Another Scotty Pippen. <laughs> I love here it. Go. Dunk rank thirteen, and then uh, the other one in this pack is Akeem Olajuwon. Good stuff. Good stuff. Yep, and he's a dunk rank four. So, yeah, I, I like these packs that they have two, two NBA Jam Session cards in each pack. So I would say by the end of this, hopefully it'll have the whole set of it because that's really what I'm going for in this one. Got to get a nice frame for it or something or put, put in a nice set of sleeves. Here we, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Get them up on the wall. Here we go. NBA Jam Session, Charles Barkley. And Hell yes. Stacy Augman. So those are two. All right. All right. We're getting we're getting pretty close to the set. I'm still looking for that Shaq rookie card. I don't see nothing. I, 
I would imagine probably the stack one might be one of the hardest ones to obtain or I don't know, it's just or I don't know if there's any rarity on a twenty five year old rookie card, but you know, you never there's know. not, you know, these cards have plummeted in value. They were worth more at the time, at least Beckett said so. Beckett was uh, what kept track of uh, what the cards were worth. Now, I mean, yeah. the cards are probably, they're worth like one-fourth, one-fifth of what they were. Here's a pretty good one. Latrell Sprewell, all rookie. There you go. He can stay yeah, out of trouble a, on a card, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's that. Oh, and here you go. Another big double for Kevin, Kurt Rambis. My Rambis, yes. I'm excited for that one. That's going on a big sleeve. <laughs> Hopefully I'm not missing anything here. And two new jam session cards. We got Otis Thorpe. He's nice, a big nice. player in uh, the Rockets' first championship. And then he got traded to Portland Trail Blazers. And then we got Dwayne Coswell. He's a dunk rank 12. Otis Thorpe was a dunk rank 3. And we got a lot of filler cards in this set. And so on that checklist, like what what else is uh what else is out there that are in those like uh in the jam sessions? I assume there's like is like Shaq on the jam session or Jordan or Let me see. I just, uh, you know, conveniently, it doesn't say what the jam session cards are. There might be a it's all <laughs> jam session checklist. I think I saw that out there. So we'll see if okay. we get Lafonso Ellis rookie card. Nice, nice. First one of that. I mean, he was a, a solid NBA player for sure. Here we go. Big time. Sean Kemp. This is the one I was looking for. The rain man. I love it. Yeah. So the first basketball jersey I ever owned, Sean Kemp. Me, so mine a, too. That, mine too. A nice third year. It was, oh, nice. It was the old school Sonics too. Mhm. Mm not not the the crazy Sonic like with the the swirl, the classic like late '90s garbage. Yeah. <laughs> and Robert Paris was still throwing down dunks in '92, uh, '93. Dunk rank fourteen. All right. Yeah, that's funny. But, I mean, Sean Kemp was just a, a, such an exciting player back in the day. And then he got traded to Cleveland and then had like 12 kids with 12 different women. And, you know, it's, it kind of fell apart for him once he got traded. <laughs> See how we got uh, Ben Baker and then moved the team. So. Yeah. All right. So this checklist does have the NBA Jam session cards. So what's in there is David Robinson, Dikembe Mutombo, Otis Thorpe, Akeem Olajuwon, Sean Kemp, Charles Barkley, Purvis Elson, Chris Morris, Brad Doherty, Derek Coleman, Tim Perry, Dwayne Caldwell, Scottie Pippen, Robert Parrish, Stacey Ogman, Michael Jordan, Carl Malone, John Williams, Horace Grant, and Orlando Woodridge. So we still didn't get two of the best ones, which are Jordan and uh, and Carl Malone. But here's another I'll Derek Coleman and Horace Grant coming your way. <laughs> Keep bringing them in. I love it. I love it. But, yeah, it's like figure Jordan Malone are the two big ones here. So. Hey, Mike, I see you in the chat. It's uh, it's still cold in the basement, man. That's why I got this hat on. I'm trying to stay warm down here. And Kevin, got to live in a warmer climate or something. What are you drinking there, Kevin? Uh, we, we, we decided to go. We went with the Miller Lite. We're, we're done with the local right now. So. <laughs> this one only had one jam, jam session card. It's Chris Morris on the Nets. Dunk rate eight. Uh, so, I love them on the Nets on, on the arcade, but that's, that's a different story. <laughs> the chat was saying that you need another beer. Well, all right. I'll work on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he'll get to another one. Otis Thorpe, another jam session card. Solid, so solid. At this rate, you might have more than half the set. I remember having this card back in the day. It's a char just regular Charles Barkley in the set. 
Nice. Nice. Let's see, anything else? And here we go, two more jam sessions that we already had. It was the Kambe Matumbo and Tim Perry. Solid. Just still looking it. for the MJ, still looking for the Carl. Like Carl, yeah, about, no Jack. Yeah, we're about, what, halfway through the set here? Oh. I hope so. <laughs> I'm just throwing the plastic on the floor, so see anything good in this one here we go Alonzo morning rookie card <laughs> you got two Double. holy shit <laughs> there you go and good old doubles oh and we got it we got a triple going here with Kim Elijah one and nice. uh, Scotty Pippen there you go you find another friend you give it to someone on the chat or something yeah <laughs> you wanted in the chat want these cards or you still want me to burn them like you said before? <laughs> <laughs> All right, another checklist. Here we go. We got we got a Carl Malone right here. Carl Malone, big nice. uh, dunk seventeen. Ooh, Matt Geiger. Remember Matt Geiger? He has hair in this picture. That's got to be fake. It's fake. Stop. That's, that's, that's ridiculous. <laughs> it's his rookie card. It's his rookie oh, that's why. So. Oh, man. Only one jam session, that one. Definitely burn them. Right in the recycling bin. They're actually glossy. They might, like, turn purple and blue or something if you light them on fire. <laughs> It'll keep you warm in the basement if you light them all at once. Yeah. Oh, a triple of the Alonzo Morning rookie card. <laughs> what do you know? And here we go. Steve Kerr on the Orlando Magic. Damn, I don't even remember him being with the Magic. <laughs> Me neither. And here we go. Big money right here. See if it's in good condition. We First, we got the Purvis Ellison, dunk rank seven. And here it is, the Michael Jordan. Nice. Nice. Dunk rank 16. So there's no way Jordan's dunk rank was 16. And they actually says things on the back. It says, people ask me, do you think you can fly? Yeah, for a little while. That's what Jordan said. That's a, that's a great question. No, that was, that's, that's the best they could come up with. I'm, out of all the Jordan interviews and statements he ever made as a player, and so, yeah. <laughs> hey, you, you, hey, you pulled a Jordan, man. That's, that's 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 what we were hoping for out of this box, right? Yeah. The, now, really, the only thing is the Shaq rookie card. I'm not seeing it. Man, there's there's a lot of crappers in this set. I'll tell you that. <laughs> Another David I, Robinson. Nice. We got a double there. So, hey, the next Jordan card is yours, man. So hopefully you get one we'll of those. see what happens. Yeah, it's, I don't have uh, high hopes on that one, but, you know, at the very least, hopefully you're able to complete the whole jam session set. I, yeah. I want that to happen first before the second Jordan. <laughs> Chad says Jordan was drunk when he said that. <laughs> Doc Rivers on the Knicks. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. There it is. You made it all the way to 93. Holy crap. Tracy Murray, Malik Seeley, Doug Overton. Oh, here's a Robert Ori rookie card. Ooh. That's the first one of those. He was nice. a key nice. player um, for the 93 94 Rockets championship. I'm just, I got stacks of cards now. Doc Rivers, the chat's laughing at Doc Rivers. Oh, and here is another insert card. Um, this is the first of this kind. Scott Skiles, Playmaker. My boy. Look as, at that. As you know, there's another, 
Yeah, another dude with a great head of hair right there on that on that card. Yes, as you know, Scott Skiles on the Orlando Magic in the original NBA Jam, and uh, also he still has the NBA record for assists in the game with thirty assists. Someone's gonna beat that at some point. There's gonna be like a triple OT game or something. So here's Pooh Richardson on the Pacers. I always wondered how his name could be Pooh. Like who, who named <laughs> that? Even as a nickname, that's rough. Like I was gonna say, is what the, like his full name on the back or something? Or like <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what his actual if that was his actual first name or not. He was always Pooh Richardson in any of the video games. But the Clippers were never on TV, so I never got to hear, like, a Clippers game called back in the day. Understood. So we got another Otis Thorpe and Dwayne Croswell NBA Jam session cards, so uh, you'll be definitely getting those. Cool. <laughs> So we got we still got a few, quite a few packs left, so I'm not I'm not losing faith for the rest of the set or the Shaq rookie card. Where's Brian? How come I'm not opening Tecmo Bowl cards? Um, <laughs> there's no Tecmo Bowl official cards, but there are sets that were out when the Tecmo Bowl was out. If you come to one of the tournaments, they'll definitely give you those. And Brian, he's probably sleeping right now. He's got work tomorrow. Uh, let's see. Anything good in this one? Derek Coleman. Another Derek Coleman. Dunk rank 10. Jam session cards all over the place. So did, did you collect basketball cards at all back in the day? Um, a few. I, I got just like, you know, probably you're opening up about as many basketball cards as I ever did over the course of four or five years. I just, I was more, <laughs> more of a, like a baseball card guy, but, um, you know, it's, I, I have a couple, I'm, I'm sure I can scrounge around. Uh, I'm, I know they're probably haven't been all burned to the ground by my parents They're somewhere in a box in a basement somewhere, but you know, um, there you go. It's Robert, another Robert Ory rookie card. Good stuff, good stuff. Round out the rest of the Rockets. Yeah, they, there seems to be a lot of filler, like guys that were just coming off the bench. Mm -hmm. Todd Day, he was a good player. Randy Brown on the Kings. Brad Doherty, another jam session card. Solid. John Williams. Dave Johnson, nothing good, nothing good. All right, this one, Charles Jones, another insert card. It's Clarence Weatherspoon, all rookie. Yeah. Nice, nice pick, nice pull. He's another guy that uh, is in NBA Jam on the 76ers. Oh yeah, he he and uh, Sean Bradley so just make a nice little one-two punch. At least in the, some version. Yeah. The Kemba combo, Tim Perry. The best card so far, I would say, is probably the Jordan Jam Session card. I would assume so, just based on the player and based off of the, uh, you know, this film. Uh. Yeah, the the insert cards too. I mean. The best one was that Scott Skiles playmaker, but I don't think Scott <laughs> Skiles over Jordan. Another Rambus. I'm seeing – ooh, Brad Lojas. He's definitely one of the ver first versions of NBA Jam. Yes. You get too far Judd ahead of him all the time, yeah. Judd Bushler on the Warriors. He was on the, some of the Bulls NBA Finals teams. Danny Ferry, Mookie Blaylock, and another David Robinson. There's Mookie on the Hawks. All right, so let's see. How many packs do we got left here? 
he got at least like 10. So I would say I'm already doing better than I thought it would do in this box. Sam Mack, Marcus Webb. Ooh, the Christian Leitner rookie card. I think that was the first one. That is solid. <laughs> that is solid. I like it. So I don't know who's going to pay me for that one, but <laughs> here's another Barkley jam session card. It's a double. It's like a baker's dozen at this point. <laughs> yeah. The jam session cards are just coming. And what? There's another Stacy Augman. So it it's about it's about two jam sessions per pack. There's there's been some that only have one, so it's probably about seventy jam session cards. There's only twenty in the set, so I would say if you open a box, you should get two sets of it. Brad Lojas, Chris Morris, another Carl Malone jam session. Ooh, Mario Eli, he was big on the Rockets, but yeah, nothing. Uh, Robert Pack, he was in an NBA Jam TE. Uh, kind of a crappy one. Kind of a crappy pack. The only thing I'll be disappointed about is if I don't get one Shaq rookie card. John Karate. Here's Vinny Del Negro on uh, the Spurs. Ooh, wow, John Barry on the Bucks. Full head of hair again. <laughs> oh, here's a Scott Brooks, another NBA head coach of the Wizards nice, now. Nice. Got a lot of coaches. And Sean Kemp and uh, Robert Parrish. These are not in the best condition, but they're, they're coming. So, Robert Parrish. I can't, can't complain about that. So, I'll sit on a nice wall or something for a while. So. <laughs> so, I'm, I, I'm digging it. I'm digging this. I'm digging this. It's a nice little box opening that you got going on here. So, it's they're all over the, the YouTubes and whatnot for all sorts of various reasons and different kind of genres and whatnot. So, it's, it's pretty cool. So. Yeah, I, I think it's uh, it's interesting just to see what you could get out of a box to give you someone an idea of, like, if I open a box of this, what will I get? Alonzo Mourning, mm. that's, like, the third one, I think. And another Elijah Wan and Scotty Pippen. Because uh, this is a little bit different from, like, unboxing a, a game console or something because – you really don't know. You kind of want to get an idea of what you would get in the packs versus, you know, if you open a Nintendo Switch or something, it's going to be the same for everybody. <laughs> right, right. It's a, and it's probably a little more condensed and more more structured than, you know, like your loot crates and the like that have sprung up in the last few years. Right. Did you hear about that uh, that big loot crate issue with uh, the Star Wars Battlefront Two? Um, I didn't read too much into it. I know it's like there's a huge like EA backlash over it. Um, I guess people are playing like they pay for the whole game for premium or whatever, and they still don't have everything, or it's something along those lines, right? Yeah. Um, basically, the the community of people who would buy the game were. Uh, we're upset that they – oh, there we go. Michael Jordan coming your way. Whoa. NBA Jam session. Uh, yeah, people are just upset of how much they were charging for the loot crates. They were saying it's like gambling within a video game, but it's geared at kids, so it's like a no-go. Rogue Gamer, not a big fan of uh, EA. I'm not a fan of – EA sports games these days. I used to be, but they're so cookie cutter at this point. I don't have fun playing them. Oh, man. Another Charles Barkley, Stacy Ogman. Still no Shaq rookies. 
Alfonso Ellis rookie. I think there's only been one Christian Leitner, actually. I know you were looking forward to getting one of those. Uh, <laughs> it's all right. So Another he's... Barkley. <laughs> there's like five now on the Barclays? Jesus. Yeah, well, there's like a normal card in the set, and then there's a jam session. So there's, oh, that's, there's... Yeah, that's the, the regular one where he's – Posting up a little bit, yeah. He's posting up. Uh, they went to the finals this year. The, yeah. The, the 92-93 against the Bulls. Oh, we got another insert card, and this one I like. This one I like. It is John Stockton Playmaker card. So I like that's the second one of those. The other one was Scott Skiles, Matt Geiger rookie, Robert Pack, Dwayne Cooper. Man, we're we're down we're down to the last four packs now. Jack's got to be hiding somewhere in the bottom there. <laughs> Gut check time. Tim Perry, no, we don't want that. Another Derek Coleman, Horace Grant. Tracy Murray rookie cards. It's not. It's quite been quite a few of those. There's a lot of rookies in this pack. Doug Overton, Harold Miner, Bryant Stith, and Jack Haley. You remember Jack Haley? I, I do not. No. So it's a uh, Jack. You got a you got a good Jack Haley story here. Yeah, I do. Jack Haley um, later in his career when the Bulls had Rodman. He was like a guy that the the Bulls kind of had on the team to, I guess, like mediate Rodman or calm him down. <laughs> like his his player manager. I wrote really hey, he, that really. He was like a bodyguard, or just like he drove him to the games, or just like yeah, took yeah, him to the club sure. where he could hide from everybody else. Like so. right, something like that. Here's a Tom Gugliotta rookie card. Googs. Love the Googs. Finally, here it is. The Shaq rookie card. All right. There it is. Holy shit. <laughs> just, it just took to the last three packs. So now, you know, maybe we could get another one for you. But, yeah, these cards are really stuck together. Another Pooh Richardson. <laughs> All right. Last two packs. And then we'll talk some NBA Jam. Don McLean. Brad Sellers. Winston Garland. Mark Jackson. Purvis. Oh, wow. Another Jordan. So you, <laughs> you open a box of these, you're going to get pretty much all the cards. I don't think there's any way I don't have all the jam session cards. There, we just have to see if I have two uh, sets of them. And another Latrell Sprewell rookie card. And here we go. Last pack. Big money. Fleer Ultra, 92 93. But yeah, I've, I never opened a box like this before. Back in, back in the day, I could only open a couple packs at a time. You know, it was just a kid collecting cards. And it's your lucky day. Shaq, rookie card in the last pack. Oh, yes. <laughs> Holy crap, saving it to the end. I love it. Yeah, so you're you're pretty much going to get uh, – you're going to get all the good cards in this set. Too. That is awesome. And here's a this, – this is probably my favorite jam session card out of all of them just because of the way – Sean Kemp is ready for this dunk. <laughs> <laughs> it's inhuman. Yeah. And the Rogue Gamer in the chat says, uh, how much is the Jordan and Shaq cards worth nowadays? Jordan is the one exception that they still do have some value. They're not great or anything, but people will pay for the Jordan cards. Uh, the Shaq, um, I would say not so much. Jordan's like the one commodity. I, I collected a bunch of Kobe Bryant rookie cards back in the day, 
and uh, they actually went down in value from like a hundred dollars back in the early 2000s to now it's selling on eBay for thirty dollars. It's like an EX 2000 Kobe Bryant rookie card. But yeah, that was the the box break of the Fleer Ultra. Um, I pretty much showed you guys the the best cards that came out. If we looked at all these guys, you'd be like, who are they? Um, but yeah. So, so Kevin, I got some questions for you about uh, about your experience with playing the NBA Jam video game. So, um, we know you like to play that game, and you're good at it. So, when when did you first start playing that game? Um, I was gonna say it's. I honestly, I'm not sure if I played it in the arcade the first time, or I actually waited until the actual like the it came out on like the home console. Um, it was probably about the same time because um, I guess I'd had it for, I ended up getting it for Super Nintendo or really I just made my parents rent it from Blockbuster Video like five or six weeks in a row. So <laughs> I'm, more, I, I'm probably more familiar with the Super Nintendo version. Um, I'd never played the Genesis version until like a week before Madison last year, but it's pretty much the same damn game. But um, I, I was just enamored with just being able to play with all the NBA stars, you know, that I'd seen on TV and, you know, it didn't have Jordan, like, it didn't, like some versions had Barkley, some didn't, you know, it's a, but it's just like, oh, like I can be this guy and I can do these like ridiculous dunks that you can't do in like, you know, Bulls versus Blazers in the NBA playoffs or, you know, it's, it's like arch rivals on steroids, you know, it's, and that's, that's something that's, that was, that was very exciting to me just as, as a kid, it's just, it was just, out over the top out of this world with like real life players that I can pseudo recognize. Right. Exactly. Um, it, it was just with the, the NBA jam. Um, I first played it. It was, it was in the arcade, um, like seven years old, seeing, seeing the game, but it was just way ahead of its time. As far as like, you could see, you could see the players faces. Uh, there, yeah. there was nothing I don't think in sports that caught up to that for till maybe the late nineties, uh, the, the players started looking like, uh, themselves. So I, I kind of remember the first time I saw it on another sports game. I think like NBA live 98 was pretty good about having the players look like it. Um, but you know, the hockey games, baseball games, football games, they didn't catch up till way later cause they have, you know, larger player rosters. Uh, even a game like NHL two on or two on two open ice challenge, which is another yeah. game. You know they didn't really have the player faces in that. Yeah, they, they they ended up yeah they just did the same thing where it's just like you know the guy scores and then just you know out of the side it's just like here's like their stock photo of like the actual NHL player. It's like the they didn't have like the at least a great grasp of like digitized faces like on the actual player models at that point. Like, you're absolutely right. It was like, NBA Jam, I don't know, or it's just Midway in general, I'm not sure if they were the first ones arcade-wise to actually do, um, you know, photo generator, photorealistic, um, actual, like, real-life players, like, on, or just characters. Um, I'm not sure if they were the very first ones to do it, but they were certainly one of the first ones to actually make it, like, incredibly popular for mainstream arcades and you know eventually you know it's leading leading through the early to the mid 90s yeah yeah they they really uh they kicked off something great and uh i think like this box of cards the the Fleer ultra nba jam session i think it was just the perfect storm for the, the nba and its popularity in the early 90s you you got basketball cards booming you have nba jam you know, now it's the hottest arcade game out there when in re reality, the ar arcades started to die in the 90s, but n not NBA Jam. Um, pinball right. were still there, but they were going downhill. Uh, so it was just the perfect storm of everything. You know, being a kid at that time, NBA Jam, basketball cards, uh, they, they all went hand in hand together. That's part of the reason, I, uh, you know, basketball is my favorite sport because it's just all these great basketball things I was uh, exposed to at that time. 
it was just the NBA and video games and just cars just at the height of your age and popularity all just kind of coming together at the same time for you. Yeah, so I mean, that's just that, that's just how you kind of grow up to love something, you know? It's just, uh, yeah. Um, so you play NBA Jam, you know, you play other sports games. Uh, what What is actually your favorite sport game? Sports video game. <laughs> oh my goodness! Um, it's uh, that's that. I that is actually a really good question. I don't know if I have an all time favorite sports game. I mean, it's just a uh, NBA Jam Tournament Edition definitely has to be way up there. It's ahead of Tecmo Super Bowl. Um, NHL '94 is probably up there. Um, and oh man, I I, I uh, and. If I want to get like later in that, uh, like on the Super Nintendo, uh, Ken Griffey Jr. presents Major League Baseball, like the one that's like yeah. not like the very first one on the Super Nintendo. I just think that's the perfect baseball game, just to kind of round out the top, like the four major sports. Um, right. Yeah, I liked Ken Griffey Jr.'s winning run. That was a that was that was a later one. Um, yeah. Nineteen ninety six, made by Rare. But yeah, a lot of people like the earlier Griffey Jr. games on the uh, Super Nintendo. That's yeah, it's a little more arcadey. Like I feel like the the set the winning run one was more of a kind of m more pseudo realistic, and they still didn't have like the players' association license in it. But I mean, there, there's there's still some good elements to to winning run. But I just just never never really got into that one, like the first one. But, yeah, there's always those games that hit you at the right time, whether <laughs> You know, it's whether you, you get the game for, like, a birthday or Christmas or you rent the game a bunch of times or one of your, your good friends has has that game and you play in multiplayer all the time. So there's always those games that you can think back to and you're like, that's why I love this game. Yeah, was, that, that's absolutely true. It's just, like, your, your thing with, like, you know, the NBA at the height of popularity, 93, 94. I think a lot of my favorite sports games are probably 93 and 94. You know, it's like Griffey and NHL and NBA Jam. And, you know, it's, it's, uh, maybe that's why I don't rank Tecmo as high as, you know, the greatest sports game in my mind, just because it was just a little earlier than what I was accustomed to football. But, I don't know, I, I digress. I was, <laughs> yeah. um, you, don't, you don't want to say too much to, with that. You're going to have pitch for no. Or it's it's the gamer. best football game ever. I can I can tell you that. So, <laughs> Rogue Gamer in the chat saying, "Who is Kevin?" I came in late. Where is he from? Kevin, he's from Columbus, Ohio, and uh, he's just he's he's like one of the best uh, retro sports gamers out there, if not the best. Um, so, Jesus, you know, thanks. <laughs> the one, the one, uh, the one tournament that you know gave gave him gave you a shot to be good at everything at one tournament was uh, the one you played in Buffalo. I know you guys had a smaller turnout, but you ended up winning that tournament. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, we, we had a smaller, uh, smaller turnout than we were expecting. It was two, three, three weeks ago, but yeah, it's, it was just a, like a bunch of sports games. And then they kind of threw in um, like some platformers, some fighting games. Um, i trying to think that they had like Tetris as well. So it was, it, it's more than just sports. It's just kind of a decathlon of you know NES, Super, or just NES and Sega Genesis games. So that was that was a lot of fun. So it's more than just more smacking me around in Tecmo all day. You know, it made it a little <laughs> more fun. So. Yeah, right. You got to smack him around in a few games. Although I yeah, was, uh, yeah. I heard you blow it, blew a game in RBI Baseball versus him. Well, that's the thing. Oh God, that that was the that was the unfortunate thing for me was um, RBI baseball and Tecmo Super Bowl. Um, just because of time constraints, we had to make them single elimination, and they were random draw. And I got Mort in the first round both times. So yeah, it's a uh, in, in RBI baseball. Mort, I was up, I was up three, and he got four runs in the ninth. And then in Tecmo, he beat me ten three in a KC Cincy matchup. So it's just like. Well, I'm done. I'm not getting any points. You know, single elim just made me more passionate and angry to just you know wax people in the rest of the tournament. So, but no, that was like it was it was a really well done tournament. I was I was happy to 
make the trek out there and you know it's a bow nagels really did a good job you know orchestrating everything yeah th that tournament format reminded me of like what i would do at home with with my friends it's just <laughs> we would have you know decathlon events like that uh where we would and it wouldn't be all sports games either even though there would be a lot of sports games uh we'd throw them in and see who's like the best at uh at all the games oh yeah you know? mm -hmm. you so, get a bunch of friends together it's like somebody be like oh i've never played this game or you know i hate this game it's uh you know it's you just kind of make it the cap on everyone's like well you can smack the crap out of me in this one i'll smack the crap out of you in this one and we'll just have some kind of random tiebreaker where we're both equally good at it and i think it makes it fun it keeps it fresh as opposed to i know some people go to some of these retro tournaments and you play the one game and they they're like the best in the block or they were the, like the best in the neighborhood as a kid and then they go and they get you know stomped two or three games in a row and then they, they think well hell i'm never doing this ever again you know it's the versatility probably helped you know, them to kind of grow the that Buffalo, New York area just as a retro community. And I think that that's another thing that probably helps. So, but. Yeah. And you, you play in a lot of retro sports gaming tournaments uh, that I've noticed. So, you know, headed into 2018, which one would you like to win most or which one you got your eye on? <laughs> um. I mean, as much as I'd love to win a Tecmo Super Bowl, Madison 14 or whatever in Madison, Wisconsin this April, you know, I, I, I got to go with, uh, got to go with the, the one tournament that just sprung up. We were talking about there's like an NBA jam tournament out in Denver, Colorado in May. Yeah. So I'm, I'm definitely intrigued to see like, you know, who's really good in that and uh, kind of getting back on the same basketball thing. It's, I don't know what the, the NBA jam scene is, or if there are just like, you know, I try to look online if there's forums or, you know, leagues or what have you in the same vein that you see for you know, like NHL or Tecmo Super Bowl and the like. But uh, I can't, can't really find a whole lot in regards to NBA jam, which kind of is curious to me because I figure it's, it's such an iconic sports game from the nineties that there, there'd be more people that would be interested. Like, I don't know. I honestly have no idea how good I am at the game, but I would love to win that one. And, you know, just, just really interested to see how amazing people are or how far around the country people are going to travel for this one. Yes. Yeah. And, and they're, they're offering a big prize for that one. First prize, $3,500. And uh, it's, it goes down in thousands from there. I did reread the, their post and it looks like, it is a singles tournament. It's a two-day singles tournament. At least that's the way it reads. So it's a two-day double elimination singles tournament for NBA Jam. Yeah, it's, um, we'll see. I'm, I'm not sure. I haven't talked to, like, the powers that be, but I would think it would be more interesting to have teams because I'm sure you or people in the chat, you've played games of NBA Jam where, you, you know, you're driving down the lane or something, and – your computer player just like stands around like a bump on a log and doesn't do anything to help you on defense or offense. And then you, you think things like, Oh, I don't know, like a the worst player in the entire game. It's like computers just sitting there not doing anything like with doubles. You can actually, you know, have strategy and you can coordinate things. And I, I, I think also just having four people just yelling on an arcade machine. I mean, that's, that's just a, uh, that's an arcade video game nirvana, really. But, yeah. Okay. As a doubles game, NBA Jam is one of the best games that you could play, the best retro sports games, if not the best. Uh, it, the, the one thing that differentiates a game like Tecmo Super Bowl versus that is Tecmo Super Bowl is more, uh, as far as how the AI is programmed, it's programmed a little bit more predictable than an NBA Jam game because NBA Jam has that rubber band AI, and even though if you're playing someone else and you both have computer players, even if it's in tournament mode, it still looks like the the computer player sometimes really goes into like crazy mode and starts stealing the ball to make that game more even. So that's the one advantage that I would say, you know, like a game like Tecmo Super Bowl has over NBA Jam, especially if it's like a singles tournament. 
Exactly. It's like if you have a singles, you can maybe manipulate the computer a little bit more than, you know, you should. You could be terrorizing. I'm, I'm sure you've played one player against the computer. Like you can go out to a big 20-point lead in the first quarter, and then the computer makes every shot. They just instantly just hack and slash you, and you, you just can't do a whole lot about it other than just goaltend and pray. But I don't know. It's, I have every version of NBA Jam TE, and it's really interesting playing the computer in each game because each game has a different way of screwing you over if you're beating them. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I would say one of my favorite versions is the Jaguar version, but I hate playing the computer in that game because basically how they screw you in that one is you can't make any three-point shots. And they, they can make three-point shots with anybody. You know, Dikembe Mutombo shooting like 90% from three, whereas you got Reggie Miller and you're going 0 for 10. So that's how <laughs> – screw you over if you're winning by a lot so you pretty much have to dunk the whole game to to win so you know each game has its little nuances of how how the computer will screw you over but they will they definitely yeah. will yeah I'll, I'll take your word on the jaguar one it's like the jaguar and like you, you have like the sega cd one as well that's like the other one the only other one i've never played but um yeah it's, it's the, the ai definitely is a uh, it's Annoying, which which is why I think having a four-player tournament or, you know, something akin to what's happening in Madison for Friday night, um, I think that's definitely the way to go. But Yes. Yeah, NBA Jam, four players, two on two, that, that's the best way to go. And then you see, because they're both – they're all human players in the game, you could see some huge blowouts because mm -hmm. of that. Yeah, it's, so you you it's, can't have a you can't have computers like helping you out on blocks and No, yeah. there's no computer help. If you're not there to make the block or make the steal or the push or the, be in the spot for the three, you're you're screwed. You're you're done for. So Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, so and I, and I noticed too, you you play the NBA jam like at a local beer cade or arcade over there in Columbus. Yeah, yeah, it's, um, I'm unfortunate, I am fortunate enough or unfortunate for my liver, but, uh, you know, it's, I actually have it, it's a, literally like about a five minute walk, so I can just walk down there and they have, they have the original NBA jam, so it's, a, and they keep it in fairly good condition, which is nice, they, they change the joysticks and the buttons every couple of weeks, so, uh, they keep it nice and pristine, and so it's, it's not TE, which is probably my preference, but it, it keeps uh you know keeps me on the regular. So yeah, my my preference is the the original NBA Jam cabinet, and uh, I had opportunity to get one for a great price, and uh, I talked it up to my friend Mike because he's the one that told me about it, and uh, basically what happened is he he ended up buying, it. <laughs> so I talked it up too much. I'm like. He he said that he could get it from his his friend for because he's just trying to get rid of it for three hundred bucks, and I was like, I thought he was just you know yanking my chain that he really didn't he really didn't have it, but he did have the cabinet because I ended up getting a versus Super Mario Brothers in the deal as well. Nice, but nice. He, got, he got really good original NBA Jam. <laughs> cabinet uh for 300 bucks basically and uh it's in good condition it's in his basement uh i would have loved to have that game if you looked at arcade game prices nba jams one that usually hovers around a thousand to you know 1500 depending on the condition so i don't think i'll be getting any that one anytime soon but it's it's cool that he took interest in it and he has it in his basement but uh, I would have liked to get that one because that, that's probably my favorite sports arcade game is the original jam that you have five minutes down the block for you, from you. There you go. It's, well, but, yeah, it's, a, it's definitely one of the, the more sought-after, uh, you know, arcade cabinets. It's up there with, like, the Simpsons and, like, Ninja Turtles. And, like, anything yeah. that's, like, players, five-player, like, X-Men or something. But, um, yeah, it's, it's – I've – Definitely try to look online and try and find, you know, that cabinet on the cheap. And you, you can't find that on the cheap. you got to pay four figures for it. So, 
But uh, or I, at least find like the board and make your own cabinet. I don't know. Right, that was my one opportunity. As you see, I have the the Blitz and Showtime, so I'm happy with that one for sure. I mean, I was like, if I'm gonna pay for a game, I, I might as well get one that has two of the games I really like. So nice. Now, that the, is that like the original Blitz or like Blitz two thousand or like gold or what? What do you got? Blitz two thousand gold. Nice, nice. Yeah. So it it, pl it plays well. It's the cabinet's in great shape. So I just brought it down here. I had the cabinet for like four years already. Uh, this one's been in my garage, but I've I finally I got it repaired because something was wrong with the screen. I'm like, I got to bring this downstairs now. I'm not leaving this in the garage to, you know, get chilled and not work anymore. So, so here yeah. it is. Don't don't want to tear it apart and try and find like a CRT to like wire it back together and stuff. It not not a lot of fun. Yeah, no, no. I I get took the monitor out. It's not it's not the most fun process to do. It's not hard, but it's just heavy. Right. Awkward. How much was the cabinet behind me? I got this one on eBay back a while back. I got it for under six hundred. I think it was like five forty. And yeah, the only thing that killed me was the shipping. At the time, I was willing to pay. Uh, I was willing to pay like twelve hundred bucks for it if I had to, but I got it for way cheaper. But I think the shipping was like three to four hundred bucks, so I got it under a thousand. But you know, if you get into the hobby of getting arcade cabinets, they're like five hundred pounds. So getting this thing into a basement is not fun. So I don't know. I I think I'm happy with just having this one because uh, it's it's just. <laughs> It's just really heavy and uh, risky to bring down here or move anywhere. So I don't know. So, Kevin, what's the next tournament you'll be at for for any sports game? Um. Well, I just earlier this afternoon, I finally just uh, – I'm going to end up doing a tech mode Connecticut 9 out in Connecticut. So, oh, you're um, going to that. Nice. Yeah, I literally just booked, booked a flight uh, earlier this afternoon. Um, I guess I'm gonna gonna at least get my Tecmo shoes wet again. I don't play as much Tecmo as I used to, so it's not expecting to be like a a big heavy hitter or anything. But hoping to make some sort of bracket and see what happens. But um, getting getting off the just on the side thing is the the thing that actually wanted me to go there is there's going to be a side tournament of a Mega Man 2 race so I want to try and win that one and then see what I can do in Tecmo but no it'll, it'll be a, it'll be a lot of fun you know it's just it's a Tecmo community is just awesome you know it's yeah. just everyone just just group of guys that grew up playing the game or just love playing the game and just you just get the wax nostalgic it's awesome so it'll be a good weekend I'm seeing you sideways now Oh God! Yeah, it's. <laughs> I thought it was gonna flip over, so it's yeah. Yeah, no, it, it doesn't rotate on the Hangouts, I guess. Well, sack of crap. We'll all have to hang on the phone. I had to plug in the phone; it's about to die. But. Yeah. Oh okay. Yeah. So yeah, that's cool. You're going to Connecticut. Good luck there. Uh, definitely want to talk to you again uh, before the the Madison tournament. You and your partner. NBA Jam partner Ryan. Oh yeah, yeah. So he's he's pretty pumped about that. He's I think he's trying to practice on that game now. So because he hadn't played the game in probably ten years or something like that. I just uh, you know, we we, we tried to tried to do the best we could last year. So and I imagine this year it's you know the more people try to talk about NBA Jam over in Madison, you know maybe we'll get a uh, more people interested in it and. You know, it's we can use this as a forum to maybe, uh, you know, talk about teams and how to play the game and some strategies and stuff. You know, and uh, get get people yeah. interested in the game because I would I would like to, you know, not go down to the the local arcade and whack people. You know, seventy to ten. It's there's not a whole lot of joy in that. So it's it's as humbling as it is. You know, there's it's not not a, you know, it's it it's it's not enjoyable. So it's. But it's 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 to have competition, so. Yeah, you need some better competition than just waxing the the locals. And, and the then they CPUs, yeah. 
Yeah, and the computer too. So, yeah. I don't know. So, uh, yeah, Kevin, thanks for doing this box break with me. Uh, I thought it was something new to try. Uh, pretty happy with the results, and uh, I'm going to have some good cards coming your way. So, It sure sounds like it. I appreciate being here, you know, having me on here for the, the box opening and chatting a little bit about some, some 90s sports games like you always do. So it's happy yes. to be here. So. 90s sports games, they're the best, most variety uh arcade simulation even simulation games that turned out to be arcade games i don't think you you'll ever see a time like that again um especially the the sports teams licenses were being leased out to everybody so everyone got a chance to make an nfl or nba mlb nhl game uh so it was good times and uh the games are simple they don't try to get you to make microtransactions in the game. So I love it. I'm stuck on those games. Uh, and I'll probably just keep on playing them as long as there are people who will play them with me and enjoy them. Sounds good. Sounds good. Yeah, that's exactly. No no microtransactions in NBA Jam. You know, it's a, it's just a pick up. <laughs> it's just a pick up and play mentality. I mean, that's, it, it's hard to make a game like that. And then, yeah, like you said, getting licensing and, the, the EA conglomerate of the world and you know it's they have pretty much everything and if they don't then 2k probably has it and just monopolize on the whole thing it's a it's a different time it's a different uh, venue for uh, for sports games in the, in the now so but yep. you know it's just got to keep playing those 90s sports games as long as like you said as long as people keep playing them you know it's we'll keep playing right along with them so it's Yep, let's we'll just keep on having at it. Well, Kevin, thanks again. Um, this is me and Kevin signing off. You got a Twitter or anything that you uh, want to throw out there? Um, I don't have a Twitter feed. I'm again just like uh, with gaming. I'm still stuck in the 20th century. Um, <laughs> I can probably plug like I, I got a I got a Twitch channel. I'm on every once in a while, so it's just a uh, Twitch TV slash Kevin Cabarello, which uh, I hope that's spelled somewhere on the on the feed here somewhere. But uh, it's you you can find me where you can find me. That's that's about a uh, just the Twitch channel. Uh, okay, cool. <laughs> well, I'll put a link in link of it in the description below this video. Um, uh, everyone who is watching, thank you and uh, take care. <laughs>